Have you guys ever had that friend that's always talking about themselves? You know the person I'm talking about. Well, I got this one from, he came up to me and he was like, hey, big dog. And I'm like, I don't know why this guy calls me big dog. I'm not big and I don't look like a dog. I mean, maybe to you I might, but he was like, hey, what's up, big dog? He was like, hey, what's up, big dog? I just got this new car and, and I'm like, well, shoot, man, I just got this new parking spot. It's not really mine, but it's outside my house. So technically it's new, but you get my point. You know, that person that always comes around and whenever they come around, it is like, they're just one uppers. Everything they do surrounds the idea that everything evolves around them. You know, that person with the me mentality, you know, so why do we get so caught up in ourselves? Why do people get so caught up in themselves? It's crazy. It's like, if somebody's not talking about you, then you forget that you actually exist, that you actually matter, right? The people that have this me mentality is wild. It's crazy. And if you don't know who it is, maybe it's you, maybe it's me. I don't know, but here is the ticket. The people with the mean mentality might be the loneliest people walking the planet because everywhere they go, people scurry, people start to hide because the mean mentality gets exhausting, right? It gets super crazy. It gets to the point where every time you talk to that person, they're only contacting you if they need something. And then every story is about them. I'm like, dude, yeah, I got four kids. And they're like, yeah, I got five kids that I know about, you know what I mean? They have like these jokes, right? And it could be, it could be, I, I, you know, I lift this much weight. Then all of a sudden, oh, I, I, I lift 10 times that. Dude, I knew this guy that installed these glass windows one time and we were over at my house and, and they wanted to have a weightlifting competition. You know how guys are when they start to drink a little bit, they want to start doing these competitions or whatever. And I said, sure, we got a home gym. Uh, you know, let's start with curls and I was curling 45s and I'm not a super big guy. 45 is probably my max on a curl and he couldn't curl a 45 and we said, okay, well let's try bench press. He wanted to do bench press and I was like, all right, let's do bench press. So we rack up 225 and I pump out five or six of those at 225 and he can't do one. And it was silly because he's like, well, man, maybe you came to my job one day. You came to my job one day. Just maybe you could see how much weight I actually lift. I'm like, dude, I'm pretty sure you lift a lot of weight. Nobody's trying to discredit you, but you were talking all the trash and you wanted to go have a weightlifting competition and you're losing. And now there's something going on, right? Well, let's run in the foot race. Let's run in the foot. I said, okay, let me tie up my shoes, get my shoes on. We go out in the front yard and boom, we do a foot race and, and he gets smoked. I mean, it is what it is. I'm still fast. I'm 38 and I'm still, I still got a little bit of quickness. Oh, well, back when I was in high school, I was running a four, a four one forty. And I'm like, dude, four one forty. That's like elite speed. Like, dude, if you ran a four one forty, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. You would be an Olympian or you'd be a professional athlete somewhere cashing that check. 4140 is faster than Dion, man. 4140 is fast. But this is the guy that he has that mean mentality. It has to always be about him. And it's a lonely place to be. But here's the big question. People that live in this mean mentality space, could it be good and bad? Now I have a brother that is, he, he has the exact opposite of a mean mentality. He's always bending over backwards because he's lending his services. You need help moving, he's the guy to call. If you need something to eat, he's the guy to call. If you're struggling, you need some money, he's the guy to call. My mom is uh, 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 going on and off drugs, on and off, uh, on and off alcohol. Boom, he's the guy to call. You get abused. So when is it time to start thinking about yourself? I mean, some people are selfish and some people are selfless to an extreme, right? But here's the ticket, when is it bad? When is it bad to have a mean mentality? It's good to think about yourself some days, what your, what your profession is gonna be, what your career looks like, how you're gonna raise your kids. It's good, right? And it's also bad to lend your services, never say no. You listen to successful people and all of them say, I have to learn how to say no, right? So here is the big ticket. If you find yourself 
on the me mentality when it's all about you. Here's a practical solution, one that I've learned, because I have a little bit of that in me, is just learn to listen, tell me more, and be engaged in the answer, tell me more, helped me overcome my me mentality. And then on the opposite side, saying no to the little things at, at the beginning will help you say no to the big things, right? So what side are you on? Are you a people pleaser, so selfless that people take advantage of you or you have to say no? Or are you that dude that nobody wants to be around because it's all about you? Here's a ticket. Ask more questions if you're that guy. Get people to deliver communication to you. And here's the other deal. If you're the guy that's so selfless, practice saying no, man. It's going to help your life out. Fatherhood Secrets, cheers.